Hello YouTube, this is Dan, I hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to do just a different kind of video. I'm going to do a video about Android talk, where I'm not going to have any specific topic, I'm just going to talk about Android. Now why I want to do this is because I feel there's a lot of channels that just talk about the basics of Android, or they talk about Android development. Now I'm not into the basics of Android, and I'm not into Android development, I'm kind of past the basics but nowhere near Android development. I like root, I like messing with the file system, I like new apps, and I like um, making things work. I love Tasker. Um, and so I just wanted to talk about some things on Android because I had a really hard time learning. So let me go ahead and um, just start off with um, root. So what is root? Um, root gives you control over your phone. Without root, you don't have administrative privileges like in Windows. Um, so you will get a lot of access denied you can't do these things. So um, think about Windows where if you have your program files if in your C drive and you want to copy some files over, um, you aren't going to be able to do that without giving it administrative administrator um, permissions. So you're going to have to click that box that says, yes, do this action. But now, um, If you don't have root, if you're non-rooted device, you don't actually have control of your device because you don't have that option to click, yes, I want to copy these files because you don't have root or administrative access. So um, what root does is it gives you access to all those files. So normally a system app, you can't uninstall a system app because it's in a protected area of storage. Well, if you're root, you have access to that area of storage and you can uninstall that system app. So let me go ahead here and show you an idea. Um, it's over here with disk usage. And here you can see storage card, which is your user accessible memory, your data. Here you have XD card, which is your micro SD card, which you don't need to root for. Here it says root required. Now these are all a bunch of partitions that require root to access. Otherwise, you can't write from these. Um, partitions and you can't read from them. So here we have the cache, we have the data, we have the dev, I'm not sure what any of these are, we have the firmware, firmware modem, secure, persistent, proc, proc is actually where all your system processes are because in Linux everything is a file so you can actually see your processes in there as a file. Um, storage emulated, legacy system, I see Linux debug system. So as you can see here, you can access all these different uh, partitions if you're root. So let's go ahead and check the proc directory. There won't be anything in here. But I don't think this app can access it properly. See, um, disk usage has been granted super user permissions. So it's just been granted root because it needs to go into a file system that requires root. Now I still don't think it'll be able to scan this folder. No, it's not going to. Um, let me go to another one like system. I should be able to scan the system folder just fine. All right, here you go. You can see the um, system partition is a two and a half gig partition. You have your privileged apps. Um, as you can see here, and now you can access these, and you can take these APKs, and you can share them, so other people can install them, you can uninstall them, so it's part of what root does. Now let's go over here to root apps, and now why an app would need root. So, um, let's say here we have an app like GMG Gestures. 
Now, GMD Gestures, one of my favorite apps, by the way, um, you can go ahead and draw on your screen, and it's going to perform an action. Now, why this needs root is because it needs to track your touch is on the screen. So your touch event, so it needs to track them and consume them. Um, so that's the reason it would need root, because a normal user app could not track what your touches on the screen are and then consume them so they don't activate on another app. Now another one, Adway. Now this is a good example. I remember I was talking about the file system. Well, what Adway does is you have a host file which tells you which websites, when you type in the name google.com, it'll tell um, if it's, it'll tell your um, phone to go to um, search for google.com from a domain directory. But if it's in your host files already, it doesn't need to go out and look on the internet for where google.com is. It knows google.com is 8.8.8. .8. So it'll go straight to 8.8.8 .8 and that'll go to Google. But now, if you change your host file and tell your host file that google.com is really 127.1.1, I think, um, 1.0.1, .1, which is your local host, which is your own device, and you type in google.com, it will go and it won't be able to connect to google.com because it'll be going moving back to your device. And that is exactly how Adaway works. It modifies the host file. So when you type in a um, website, double click, or any of these ad sites will automatically go back to your home, which is null, and you will not see the ad. So the ad will not be loaded. And the only why you need root for this is because in order to modify the host file, you need root to write in that file because it's in the system partition. Um, so that's another reason you would need root. Um, let me go ahead and look at some more um, apps that require root. So, get into Expose in another video. Alright, so that's enough about root for now. So, now, in order to get root, sometimes you hear you need to install a custom ROM. So, now what is a custom ROM? A custom ROM is a modified version of the operating system on your device. So you have stock Android, which is called AOSP, which you may have heard of. Um, and then carriers take stock AOSP Android and modify it. So Samsung modifies the stock, um, like what you would get with Android if, if you got it from Google. Um, so Samsung takes the stock Android and modifies it, and now it becomes TouchWiz. So they do some settings. I know they change how the encryption works so you can encrypt your micro SD card and they change other things on the device. So now you have a TouchWiz ROM or a TouchWiz operating system. And ROM is um, read-only memory and it's also in interchangeable with the word firmware. So if you hear someone say um, install new firmware on your device or um, custom ROM, when referring to Android, that means um. A custom operating system and custom is not really custom as you have a totally unique operating system it's just a modified version of what was already on your device or what comes stock when you buy the device um, stock as in what's on the device right when you buy it um, so uh, if I buy a Samsung device it's going to need a um, it's going to be a TouchWiz ROM now, so in order to install a custom ROM on your device, there is a bootloader, which 
you might have heard about on Windows 10 called Secure Boot. And that bootloader, what it does is it only allows um, custom ROMs or custom operating systems that have verified signature, which from the manufacturer or the carrier that says, yes, we allow this ROM to be installed and to run on this device. So you can't install a custom ROM or get root when you have a locked bootloader unless there's an exploit where you can do it on your stock ROM. So you need to unlock your bootloader. So if you went and put a custom ROM on your device without unlocking the bootloader, it would boot up and there'd be an orange triangle saying, cannot boot this operating system or something to that effect. Um, because it's not signed, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means your bootloader is locked and won't let it actually load up that operating system. So what you need to do, or not what you need to do, um, so if your bootloader gets unlocked, um, then you can install a custom ROM. Now, the main thing about a custom ROM is you can get root. And root, we already talked about it earlier. Um, so you can have root privileges when you install that custom ROM. Now, a lot of carriers don't want you to be able to unlock your device. Um, they say it's a security issue, but while it is a security issue, um, if you need that kind of security, it doesn't help you anyways. Um, it's more of a way for them to control the devices, and because they really don't care about you, the customer, if you want to mod your device, because anyways, chances are you don't have a lot of money. Um, you aren't their main customer base. You will be watching what you're spending and everything else. Um, right, so, once you unlock your bootloader, so this is where uh, modders come in, uh, the um, XDA forms and developers. So, there's people there, there are developers there, that are much better than me, that know a ton of stuff, which I don't, um, not magical, but um, just skills they don't have where they can go and unlock these devices. They find errors, back doors, bugs. That's how my bootloader is unlocked because um, the Galaxy Note 3 had a back door to its bootloader. I'm not sure how all this works, but um, the EMMC memory, which is the memory chip on the device, had a back door where you could write to it. So you could write a um, new bootloader, I'm assuming, or unlocking the bootloader, and my device became unlocked so that I could flash a custom ROM and achieve root. Now, you might hear about developer devices. What a developer device is, is a device that comes stock um, operating system but with an unlocked bootloader. So developer devices are can go about $400 more. So if you have a $600 phone, a developer phone could be about $1,000 or more. Um, but it comes with an unlocked bootloader. So then you can flash your own custom ROM even if there's no root yet for the device. So, um, Now, kernels. Now, a kernel is how your software talks to the hardware on your device. And Android uses the Linux kernel. If your kernel, I'm not sure how all this works, but I'm just trying to help. If you can't use AOSP on Android, on your Samsung Android device, if your kernel is still TouchWiz, it's still the TouchWiz kernel. So in order to install a new operating system, such as AOSP, you're going to need a modified kernel too. So now it's more than just flashing an operating system, you need to flash a new kernel. Now this gets dangerous because you can hard break your device if you flash a wrong kernel. Also, if you flash 
let's say an AOSP ROM for your Galaxy Note 3 when it's a TouchWiz device, you can brick your device so it won't start. Brick as in, it's just a brick, it's not a phone, it's useless anymore. So, um, and there's two different kinds of bricks. There's soft bricked, which your device goes into a boot loop and it won't actually start, but all the buttons still work. Then there's hard brick. Hard brick, the device becomes completely dead and unresponsive. So, when it's hard bricked, there's a couple things you can do, but that'll be for another Android Talk video. Um, so, in order to get AOSP on a TouchWiz device, you're going to need an unlocked bootloader and the AOSP kernel for your device. Also, you can't just go ahead and install a TouchWiz ROM from, let's say, the Galaxy Note 2 on the Galaxy Note 3. That'll also not work and may brick your device. Um, and you might wonder, can I install a... Can I install KitKat or Android 4.4 on a Lollipop kernel device? No, you cannot. If your device has Lollipop and you want to install KitKat, you need to downgrade both your kernel and your stock ROM. So, only reason you won't flash a kernel is if you're flashing a modified version of the stock ROM basically to give you root. When I flashed my custom ROM, I got root and I got exposed. And I'll talk about exposed in another video. So, also, you might wonder, well, can I root my device? Well, this kind of depends. It's not every device has root. In fact, a lot of devices don't have root, especially if you're on a off-brand device, um, then you won't have root. Now, that's not saying you always won't have root because I'll go into more of how to root your device later, but there's a good chance that you won't be able to root your device. So that's not to say you aren't any good at Android or you're not smart enough to root. No, um, it's just your device doesn't support root and it would be completely ridiculous to expect you to root your device on your own and write your own exploit. That's ridiculous. Um, just to put that in perspective, the um, Tau root, which rooted KitKat devices, how that was done was one very good computer um, security or just computer user, um, I hate to use the word hacker, went to a conference and for Google's bug bounty and won $25,000 for getting remote access to a Chromebook by using a Air and the Linux kernel, a completely undiscovered bug in the Linux kernel to get root access on Chromebooks. So what happened there was then Geohot took that exploit and ported it over Geohot as a developer. And he took that export exploit and ported it over to Android. And so all the KitKat devices with 4.4, a lot of them could now be rooted. So you realize writing your own root would just be very bad advice. Now, the reason I say this is a lot of times on especially hack forums, you get a lot of um, people who are either teenagers or they're just really, they're just the annoying people of the internet. Um, where you'll ask a question and they'll say, well, why would you want to do that? Or you'll ask a question and they'll say, you shouldn't do that only because they don't really know the answer. So, as an example, um, let's say someone writes a request. I need a keylogger on my phone because I think my wife is cheating and I want to find out whether she's cheating or not. Now, the moron in the forum would say, you shouldn't spy on your wife because that's wrong. Now, what's really going on is he doesn't know how to set up a keylogger because if he did, he'd be joyously 
proclaiming how much he knows how to use a keylogger and showing you how to do it for your device. So you can just ignore those people. Um, but now, back to my point of what I was talking about is, let's see if I remember here, talking about root and the bootloaders and the custom ROMs. Oh yes, so if you can't root your device, it's not because you weren't smart enough, it's because an exploit hasn't been written and hasn't gone through that long chain of computer experts down to you. Um, so this is why getting advice that is rootable, so looking up your device model number beforehand, is very important. Um, then you know if you can chain root on your device. Now some devices you can attain root, but you can't unlock the bootloader. Now how you do that is through an exploit on the running device that allows you to gain um, privilege escalation. So like I was saying with Windows, when you become administrator, well with Android it's the same thing. When you become um, administrator in Android, if you do um, some exploit on the device, get way to run code in privilege mode and then install a root, and then install a um, permanent root, then you now have a rooted device, but your bootloader is still locked, so you're stuck with your you're stuck with stock ROM, but you're still rooted. So that's how come you will hear some people say, "My device is rooted, but my bootloader is still locked." Um, right. So let's go. Um, probably wrap this video up now. It's past the twenty minute mark. Um, if you have any questions. Go ahead and leave a comment below.